Capitol in Washington, the President of the United States goes before Congress each year to deliver his message on the State of the Union. President Truman outlines the legislation which, in his opinion, is necessary to keep the nation strong and healthy. Mr. President, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, members of the Congress, a year ago I reported to this Congress that the State of the Union was good. I am happy to be able to report to you today that the State of the Union continues to be good. Our republic continues to increase in the enjoyment of freedom within its borders and to offer strength and encouragement to all those who love freedom throughout the world. While great problems still confront us, the greatest danger has receded the possibility which faced us three years ago that most of Europe and the Mediterranean area might collapse under totalitarian pressure. Today, the free peoples of the world have new vigor and new hope for the cause of peace. Today, by the grace of God, we stand a free and prosperous nation with greater possibilities for the future than any people ever had before in the history of the world. We are now, in this year of 1950, nearing the midpoint of the 20th century. Among all the great changes that have occurred in the last 50 years, none is more important than the change in the position of the United States in world affairs. 50 years ago, we were a country devoted largely to our own internal affairs. Our industry was growing, and we had new interests in the Far East and in the Caribbean but we were primarily concerned with the development of vast areas of our own continental territory. Our tremendous strength has brought with it tremendous responsibilities. We have moved from the outer edge to the center of world affairs. Other nations look to us for a wise exercise of our economic and military strength and for vigorous support of the ideals of representative government and a free society. We will not fail them. As an immediate means to this end, we must continue our support of the European Recovery Program. This program has achieved great success in the first two years of its operation, but it has not yet been completed. If we were to stop this program now or cripple it, just because it is succeeding, we should be doing exactly what the enemies of democracy want us to do. We, sh we should be just as foolish as a man who, for reasons of false economy, failed to put a roof on his house after building the foundation and the walls. I urge that the Congress adopt the legislation now before it to provide for increasing the flow of technical assistance and capital investment in underdeveloped regions. This program is in the interest of all peoples and has nothing in common with either the old imperialism of the last century or the new imperialism of the communists. In the case of labor, free collective bargaining must be protected and encouraged. Collective bargaining is not only a fundamental economic freedom for labor, it is also a strengthening and stabilizing influence for our whole economy. In our hydroelectric and irrigation undertakings, as well as in our other resource programs, we must continue policies to assure that their benefits will be spread among the many and not restricted to the favored few. Our democratic ideals, as well as our best interests, require that we should do our fair share in providing homes for the unfortunate victims of war and tyranny. In so doing, we shall add strength to our democracy through the abilities and skills which these men and women will bring here. I urge the prompt enactment by the Congress of the legislation now before it to extend and broaden the existing displaced persons law and remove its discriminatory features. It should make us truly thankful as we look back to the beginnings of this country that we have come so far along the road to a better life for all. It should make us humble to think as we look ahead how much further we have to go 
to accomplish at home and abroad the objectives that were set out for us at the founding of this great nation. As we approach the halfway mark of the 20th century, we should ask for continued strength and guidance from that almighty power who has placed before us such great opportunities for the good of mankind in the years to come.